ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय नारायण नमस्कृत नदम सेव नरोत्तम देवी सरस्वती व्यास प्रचोदय नदीर अष्टप्राय शोभद्रेशु नि भागवत सेवया भगवते ऋतुम श्लोक भक्तिर्भवती नैष्टी ओम अज्ञानतिरांद से ज्ञानांजन शलाकय चक्षुन मिलित मेन तस्म श्रीगुरव नम नमो विष्णुपादा कृष्ण प्रेष्ठा भूतले श्रीमती भक्ति वेदात स्वामी नाम नमस्ते सारस्वती देवी गौरवाणी प्रचारिणे निर्विशेष शून्यवादी पाश्चात्य देश तारिणे जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधर श्रीवासादि गौरभक्तवृंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे विद्यातपो विद्यातपोवित्तवपुर्वयकुलतामेतर मृतौ हतायां धृतमान दुर्दृशा सभ्यान पश्यी धाम भूयास भूयसा ऑल दिक्स क्वालिटीज education austerity wealth beauty youth and heritage are for the highly elevated one highly elevated one who is proud of possessing them becomes blind and thus he loses his good sense and cannot appreciate the glories of great personalities so this verse is describing those people who have ex- some extraordinary qualities in this material world education austerity wealth beauty youth heritage and therefore the elevated ones highly elevated ones highly elevated means those who are above all this material pride etc but this verse is saying if one if although these are for highly elevated one who possesses it and who is proud of it he becomes blind this we can see in the material world people are blinded by their so called education wealth beauty youth etc and thus the person loses good sense and cannot appreciate the core glories of great personalities and what happened to daksha it may be argued that since daksha was very learned wealthy and austere and had descended from a very exalted heritage how could he be unnecessarily angry towards another the answer is that when the qualities of good education good parentage beauty and sufficient wealth are misplaced in a person who is puffed up by all these possessions they produce a very bad result milk is a very nice food but when milk is touched by an envious serpent it becomes poisonous Similarly, material assets such as education, wealth, beauty, and good parentage are undoubtedly nice, but when they decorate persons of a malicious nature, then they act adversely. <coughs> so, one question: If anybody can try to answer, these are all good qualities. How can these good qualities be present in a person who also has bad qualities? A malicious person. Take care. It's being said. Of malicious nature. How can these good qualities be present in a person who is of malicious nature? What is the answer? Anybody? okay these yeah actually uh, they are not like present they are superficially they are like superficially there okay mm-hmm. okay so see these good qualities come uh, manifest in a person when he's actually done lot of punya um so this is these are not these are not spiritual qualities these are just material qualities which are the result of punya 
means if somebody has done pious activities, he will have these qualities. But in Kali Yuga, people do good quality, they have do good things and also do bad things. Because they do bad things, they develop a malicious nature. Um, so Kali Yuga specifically is very, very difficult to understand because people would have both good and bad qualities. In previous yugas, because of Varnashrama, generally people who have good qualities normally would have good qualities, would have very less bad qualities. Mm. But uh, specifically in Kali Yuga, this is possible. Mm. That a person does Punya and also Papa side by side. Mm. So those who have done Punya and have got all these good qualities, but at the same time have done Papa, have done sinful acts, and have therefore developed a malicious nature. They, uh, so if these good qualities are present in such bad people, they act adversely. Though these are very good qualities to possess. Somebody has these qualities, it's very nice. Another example given by Chanakya Pandit is that a serpent that has a jewel on its head is still fearful because it's a serpent. Just because it has a jewel on its head and it's well decorated, uh, suddenly it doesn't mean that the serpent has changed or that the serpent is not going to bite. A serpent by nature is envious for other living entities, is envious of other living entities, even though they be faultless. That is the nature of a serpent. Now, whether that serpent is wearing a jewel, not wearing a jewel, it doesn't matter. When a serpent bites another creature, it is not necessarily because the other creature is at fault. It is a habit of the serpent to bite innocent creatures. That is a snake. Similarly, although Daksha was qualified by many, by many material assets, because he was proud of his positions and because he was envious, all those qualities were polluted. So these qualities are actually pure, but because of his pride and envy, they became polluted. And then it results in adverse effects, like what happened now. Therefore, sometimes detrimental for a person advancing in Krishna consciousness to possess such material assets. So, Prabhupada is carefully using the word sometimes here. Because it's not true of everybody. It's not true that anybody who has any of these good qualities, uh, you know, end up in mess. No. Uh, only sometimes. Some, uh, some people, some devotees only who have Good qualities also have bad qualities. So those good qualities then become uh, detrimental. Kunti Devi, while offering prayers to Krishna, addressed him, addressed him as a kinchana gochara, one who is easily approached by those who are bereft of all material acquisitions. So we discussed this during when you discuss prayers of Kunti Devi. Um, so bereft of all material acquisitions. Yeah, somebody who was materially really, you know, very bad situation. For that person, it's very easy to call Krishna with feeling. Actually, Prabhupada in that purport explains that uh, he will call out Krishna with feeling. And uh, yeah, sometimes when these material when these material miseries are short lived, um, I know what happens then. Uh, in Kannada, there's a saying. Which means that only when there is difficulty, one goes to the Lord. But if the suffering is sustained, then that becomes second nature, meaning he just uh, becomes attached to Krishna, irrespective of uh, even after his uh, miseries have ended. But if somebody's miseries just come and then uh, they pray, they come to Krishna, uh, and then it goes off, uh, then they might even forget. Uh, so it's easier when a person is akinchana gochara, is bereft of material acquisitions. It's easier for that person to call out. Uh, and these material acquisitions could be anything. It could be wealth, education, health, relations, whatever it is. And so that is the reason why Kali Yuga is favorable. Uh, because... Uh, you know, it's inevitably everybody has some problem or other. And uh, Sukruti na, uh, the Sukruti, they'll come to Krishna. Material exhaustion is an advantage for advancement in Krishna consciousness. 
although if one is conscious of his eternal relationship with supreme person of god one can or utilize one's material assets such as great learning and beauty and exalted ancestry for the service of the lord it doesn't it is not necessary that one has to be materially impoverished only no even if he has material assets if one is conscious the important thing is conscious i've seen so many uh devotees who have by krishna's mercy they have a lot of wealth they have a lot of wealth but they don't they they strongly feel that the wealth is theirs uh and uh, it's like you know somebody earning 1 lakh rupees gives 10 rupees or 100 rupees for for krishna's service and that's uh, very selfish krishna has not given that wealth for us to spend on ourselves mm. uh, yeah so we have to be very very conscious saying that you know this is not my money it's krishna's money how best can i use it and and when you know these devotees when they they rast or for whatever reason they're trying to explain why they're giving so this they, they express a lot of concern about anxiety anxiety about the future they no no i'm keeping this for my future for my children mm. that means that no faith uh, no faith all the wealth in the whole creation belongs to krishna but those people to whom he has given that wealth if they don't want to use it you know wholeheartedly profusely for krishna and then they're selfish and that will only happen when they're not conscious of their eternal relationship <clears throat> if we are not conscious and when we, and we have all these material positions we can get into trouble because of those material assets hmm. but if one can use one's material assets such assets become glorious in other words unless one is krishna conscious all his material possessions are zero but when the zero is by the side of the supreme one it at once increases in value to 10 unless situated by the side of supreme one zero is always zero one may add 100 zeros but the value would still remain zero unless one's material assets are used in krishna consciousness they may play havoc and degrade the possessor so this is very very important i keep seeing that mostly you know people around us generally people have money mm. uh, talking to few devotees you know who are living in big apartments and uh, devotees are saying no prabhu this place is full of passion full of maya and people have a lot of money but at the same time they are completely drowned in maya it's very difficult to get them out mm, so then we were suggesting okay then let's do some kirtan prasadam kind of programs just kirtan prasadam no no pro, no class no shravanam as in no katha shravanam let them hear hari naam let them engage in hari naam let them honor prasadam let them become purified mm, then because see we uh, proper taught us to not leave any section of society right some or the other we have to we have to bring krishna consciousness to everybody mm-hmm. so we have seen this practically uh, you know the people who have wealth they're so much drowned in that blinded by their wealth mm-hmm. or whatever education etc etc beauty mm-hmm. they don't come to krishna consciousness so then that wealth is now playing havoc and it it will degrade the possessor because what do these people do these people go out and generally in the society of such people drinking alcohol is like part of the culture eating meat is part of the culture so degrading degrading money even if somebody is further degraded than women so all these kinds of things so you know it is practically seen that one's material assets uh, play havoc and so devotees have to be very very careful that their material assets don't create havoc in their life the best way to ensure that is to just keep giving wholeheartedly not uh, half heartedly holding back not worried about the future not like that you just give wholeheartedly krishna will take care so this is very important
and even uh, education somebody is very very educated like uh, Sarup Damodar Goswami during Srila Prabhupada's manifest presence he encouraged him to go and preach among scientists so Bhakti Vedanta Institute got formed like this so somebody who is uh, well educated uh, should use their education to promote Krishna consciousness mm. uh, beauty also uh, so anything any good qualities one can use to actually uh, promote Krishna consciousness but if otherwise if they have some bad qualities due to which they are not using their material assets in Krishna consciousness then it will create a lot of havoc Naita drishanam svajanabhya pekshaya grahan pati pratiyad anavastitatmanam yebhyagatan vakra one should not go to anyone's house even on the consideration of this being a relative or a friend and the man is disturbed in his mind and look in his mind and looks upon the guest with raised eyebrows and angry eyes one should not go to such a person's house even he be a relative or a friend However low a person may be, he is never unkind to his children, wife and nearest kin. Even a tiger is kind to its cubs, for within the animal kingdom, the cubs are treated very nicely. Since Sati was the daughter of Daksha, however cruel and contaminated he might be, naturally it was expected that he would receive her very nicely. But here it is indicated by the word anavasthita that such a person cannot be trusted. Tigers are very kind to their cubs, but it is also known that sometimes they eat them. Malicious person should not be trusted because they are always unsteady. So this is a very uh, unholy feature or uh, be a characteristic which is not good. Unsteady. The sati was advised not to go to her father's house because to accept such a father as a relative and to go to his house without being properly invited was not suitable. And so Shiva is or telling what is going to happen because he's disturbed in his mind uh, he will ill treat the guest uh, so, so he is he's foreseeing what is going to happen uh, and again for practicing devotees uh, this unsteady means anishtita and that is why in progress of bhakti we have a stage called nishtha nishtha means nishtita bhakti nishtita bhakti means steady devotion mm. In the stage of Anishtita Bhakti, um, our acts of Bhakti are whimsical, meaning depends on the mind. If I feel like doing, I'll do. If I don't feel like doing, I will not do. Or I will give 150 reasons why I cannot do or why I will not do. And that is a stage of unsteady Bhakti. And yeah, some of it could be... Uh, Acceptable reasons, some of them may be just namesake reasons, but still it's just unsteady, whatever be the cause. But in the stage of steady bhakti, which is nishta, and one comes to the stage of nishta when all the anarthas are almost gone, meaning they no more become a hindrance in the execution of bhakti. Uh, they no more become a hindrance, hindrance meaning their anarthas are there, but they don't remain hindrance, meaning they don't prevent the person from doing steady bhakti, meaning they don't, uh, mind will not act whimsically and give different reasons why uh, devotee should not be doing some act of devotion. And so it is steady. But for that, anarthas have to almost go. There so much cleansing has happened that the anarthas don't trouble the devotee anymore and prevent him from doing bhakti. But in the earlier stage, before one devotee comes to nishta, the anarthas prevent the devotee from doing steady bhakti. So various reasons are given, etc., etc., so that just so that he can devotee can avoid doing some service, uh, doing sadhana, etc. <clears throat> Uh, so this is a one of the stages in bhakti that we should reach on nishtita nishta bhakti 
and that is also that stage is also the brahma bhuta stage liberation stage stage of liberation because we have uh, liberated from material conditioning basically dhanarthas we are liberated from that and then one can actually comes to the stage of prema so this steady bhakti is very very important and we've seen generally it's the weak mind all our acharyas say hriday daurbalyam is one of the main reasons why devotees can't remain steady of course lack of knowledge is also there sometimes we don't know what we need to do what we don't need to do but at other times uh, once we have got the information then mostly it is just our weak mind because of which we are not able to remain steady so very very important uh, how does one develop steadiness in bhakti anybody answer how does one develop steadiness in bhakti simple for all difficult Hare questions Krishna. simple answer hari krishna prabhu yeah. sadhu sangha yeah Chant- just the association Chant- of those devotees who are steady because sometimes because of this unsteadiness even chanting is unsteady so we have to just associate with those devotees who are steady and in their association we will get inspired we will get guidance for us to remain steady and what does this steady mean in practice it means that uh whatever bhakti we are doing today obviously that should remain and only improve in coming days whatever bhakti we are doing whatever act of bhakti we are doing uh, the standard should never go down uh, whatever quality and quantity of bhakti we are doing today should not go down tomorrow that is steadiness so i remain steady i continue to do it irrespective of what my situation is i stop giving reasons how by looking at other devotees who are actually they have remained steady in their bhakti for years where they have done what they have done and they have always only moved up the ladder so this is a very important attribute for us to develop तथारिभिर्न व्यतथे शिली मुखै शेतेर्दितांगो हृदयेन दूयता स्वानां यथा वक्रधियां दुरुक्तिभिर् दिवानिशं तप्यति मर्मताडितः आर्चिवा कंटिन्यूड इफ वन इज हर्ट बाय द एरोस ऑफ एन एनिमी वन इज नॉट एज अग्रीव्ड एज व्हेन कट बाय द अनकाइंड वर्ड्स ऑफ अ रिलेटिव फॉर सच ग्रीफ कंटिन्यूज टू रेंड वन्स हार्ट डे एंड नाइट so lord shiva is telling what is the nature of the of normal people a normal people or oh, they are affected by the one kind words of somebody whom they think of as being dear to them so somebody who is dear to us if they say some unkind words then the grief that is caused it continues to rend one's heart day and night hmm Uh, the sharp arrows of an enemy does not pain a person as much as relation actually i keep observing people are just stuck in mm, relations every situation more than what has actually happened it is about how it has happened or who ca- who caused it and we are all the time the problem might be so small that one can just simply ignore it but we make it big by talking thinking about the person who did it how he or she did it and you know just gone uh, you know mental on the mental platform and emotional platform the problem itself might be very very small just such that one can just simply ignore it and move on but then no no because it was uh, not acceptable not palatable we go on that grief will make us you know go on thinking about the same thing tell others and uh, the small problem we make it big and uh, unnecessarily trouble ourselves and also trouble others so devotees have to raise above all this petty 
pettiness. I should just, okay, if something happened, yeah, see if there is anything good coming out of it. If there's nothing good, then just leave it. If there's something good, learn something, learn and then move on. And don't have to get stuck in this uh, emotionally getting entangled in the dealings of this world, which is bound to be non-palatable because this is Kali Yuga. Sati might have concluded that she would take the risk of going to her father's house and even if her father spoke unkindly against her, she would be tolerant as a son sometimes tolerates the reproaches of his parents. But Lord Shiva reminded her that she would not be able to tolerate such unkind words because natural psychology dictates that although one can suffer harm from an enemy and not mind so much because of pain inflicted by an enemy is natural and not mind so much because pain inflicted by enemy is natural. When one is hurt by the strong words of a relative, one suffers the effects continually, day and night. And sometimes the injury becomes so intolerable that one commits suicide. And so, which is the reason why, you know, as devotees, we have to be very, very careful how we deal with others. <clears throat> so, we should not be the, we should not hurt people. Uh, unnecessarily. Unnecessarily means day-to-day uh, -day transactions, small, small things. We keep doing this tutu me me. Okay, that person did this to me, I will do that. Do it back to that person. Unless we are in a position of, uh, you know, authority where we have to guide somebody. Um, you know, and even there, our intention is not to hurt somebody, but to guide somebody because it's our responsibility. And we might do it in the best way possible not with an intention to hurt the other person or make that other pers person feel bad. But uh, uh, inevitable, I mean, it's unavoidable that responsibility has to be mm, done. So sometimes there it might be, we might become the cause of uh, so-called suffering for the other person while that is actually not really suffering. Mm, but if not, in normal circumstances, normal transactions, um, for most of us, we should try not to hurt other person. And many times I've seen, we we take people for granted. Right? Like, okay, husband takes wife, granted. Wife takes husband, granted. Children take parents, granted. Saying that it's okay. Uh, even if I pain, even if I create some pain. Actually, they don't even think about the pain that they're causing. Because it just becomes so mechanical. But... Uh, the person who is experiencing the pain only knows how bad it is. And we have no uh, freedom or right to actually trouble somebody. Mm. So devotees have to be conscious. And that is why Krishna consciousness, one of the things Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur says is Jiva Himsa. Mm. We should not unless... Like I said, you know, we understand that we are in a position and we have to uh, distinguish right and wrong, tell somebody, guide them, the proper path, etc. Uh, we don't have to be the cause of distress for somebody. Hmm. Very, very important. Actually, which is one of the main reasons why actually devotees don't make progress in bhakti. Hmm. Devotees will be doing their chanting, sadhana, etc. But if they're doing Jiva Himsa, it becomes a Parada, Jiva Parada. And then one cannot make progress, it becomes a blocker. So it's very important that we be careful uh, in our dealing. We should, we should remember all the time that we are in the association of Vaishnavas. Hmm. So we should be very, very careful how we are dealing with each and every devotee. Of course, we are also trying to become a Vaishnava. So, it's also important that we be very wary about how we deal with all jivas. All jivas. Otherwise, yeah, we can be the cause of intolerable pain to somebody and thereby we will not make progress. And we will not even sometimes, many times even know that we are being the cause of so much pain for somebody. Hmm. So we have to be very conscious, very, very conscious. Uh, every word that we say, we have to think, saying, okay, is it beneficial to the other person? Is that person taking it as beneficial? Mm. 
is my is it my is in my is it in my position for me to say these things or am i just going up overboard and so we have to think about all these things so we need to be krishna conscious krishna conscious doesn't just mean we are always thinking about krishna anybody who is always thinking about krishna will never hurt he is on the uttama the uttama dikari platform and he doesn't he doesn't even see a non devotee he, for him everybody is in service of krishna and so no question of hurting somebody or so very very important characteristic um so she was saying that generally it's very difficult to have this to develop this characteristic mm, very difficult because most people are, are completely on the opposite end of the spectrum as practicing devotees these things should be the cause of our mm, distress unhappiness uh, we should think we should introspect about you know how we are our behavior our nature etc and then feel remorse we feel repentant and pray to radha and krishna uh, to give us mercy because if we don't develop these qualities we are chanting every day praying give me service but pure service is not going to come by unless we actually overcome these anarthas these bad qualities so we need to pray to radha krishna for mercy krishna is merciful but radharani is even more merciful prabhupad says that he is the feminine potency of the lord so we pray to radharani for mercy so that we can overcome all these anarthas and one day become qualified to serve her mm, otherwise yeah we can remain here punarapi jananam punarapi maranam punarami janani jatare shayanam we can keep rotating in, in this janma mrutyu chakra mm, so we have to be very conscious very very conscious mm, the association of devotees especially you know um many a times devotees just they are not just conscious that they are interacting with other vaishnavas mm. either they think that they are more advanced than others or just not conscious at all just dealing with i see many devotees um for no reason actually um, you know like not even respecting other devotees they call them by first name like in singular not even giving them respect and i keep thinking okay unless somebody is like our uh, you know son or daughter's age uh, and they are also you know it's not always required that we address somebody in singular definitely not others definitely not others i see in so many dealings they use singular come go and i of course i hindi or lok vernacular language is easy to understand english you know does it make any distinction i a j a a o j a o or at least yeah local language we know singular we should not address we should respect we should address people with respect maybe yeah we are giving them money for some service they are doing for the temple center whatever be the cause doesn't matter we should always respect we should always respect any vaishnava because if you are seeing that vaishnava's position saying that he is taking money or he is doing this he is doing that then we lose that consciousness so very important that this is this is one of the bigger block big blockers uh, for us to actually make progress so let's all try to be more conscious about our dealings and yeah more importantly relations at home that's even more difficult where we really take people for granted uh, just think ah, it's this person's duty to do these things so let he or she just do it and i can expect as much as possible from that person no oh. mm, gaur kishor das baba ji maharaj said uh, between husband and wife in the morning once when husband and wife get up we should offer obeisances to the others one chakal patra obeish uh, meaning that respect has to be there of the other person however whatever be that other person's qualification disqualification doesn't matter it's important to actually respect others and not be the cause of misery 
it should not become the cause of their misery. Very important. Actually, Daksha is showing how a Vaishnava should not be. Lord Shiva is showing how a Vaishnava should be. So it's a very, very important uh, pastime for us to understand. Okay, I'll stop here. If anybody has any comments, questions, we can discuss. Anything? Okay. Um, just one thing I want to remind those who are not part of our satsang. So we are, uh, have, you know, the biggest festival for us of the year is coming up. Sri Krishna Janmam, Sri Krishna Janmashtami Maha Mahotsav Ki Jai. Um, so 26th August, uh, we are celebrating Krishna Janmashtami and as I do every year, I'm requesting everybody to please, um, at least, um, you know, if you're not engaged in in a big way anywhere in celebrating Krishna's appearance, please engage your Lakshmi in Seva. We'll be happy to accept your Lakshmi Seva because we have actually three programs, three big programs to conduct. And we're expecting more than three lakhs, three lakhs of expenses. Uh, so any contribution from anybody would be greatly appreciated and uh, duly used in the most appropriate way in Krishna service. And I also request you to please talk to your friends, family, office, etc., etc. Uh, yeah, one big program costs roughly around one and a half lakhs. So we have two and a half big programs. One is a half program, um, and there are two big programs. So. Uh, we request all of you to please kindly contribute uh, your Lakshmi, do Lakshmi Seva for Janmashtami. And as usual, it's the same QR code. And if anybody does any uh, donation, mm, if please, anybody wanting to do donation, please give them the QR code. Um, pa, send the screenshot to me uh, so that I can account it. And also, we would want to give some uh, you know, token of appreciation, some you know, book and some prasadam for those devotees who make uh, sizable contributions. So request all of you to please try and uh, help us in this seva. Thank you very much. We can end here. Srimad Bhagavatam ki jai, Jagat Guru Shila Prabhupad ki jai, Mantra Kalpatra Bhishtha Kripas in the day of the Patitana, Pauni Deo Vaishnava, Jala Pauna Maha, Anandakoti Vaishnava ki jai. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Prabhupada.